working together with other people that already have the funds or already have the infrastructure to do what we want to do is also a good idea, especially when we're young, we're pretty super young. What else, like I'm already thinking, I think of, I have an idea in my head, but I want to hear where, where you guys are at. These are great ideas, but like, if Muhammad wants to do this for real in the next couple of years, to get that notch on his belt that he can then use for further things, what else could he do? Like a partnership. partnership with what kind of company? Gaming company. But what is what do gaming companies do well? Like events. why are gaming companies popular? Events. Huh? Like contest events. Contest events. But think Games. even from, but think even like when you told me your idea, I instantly saw something that was slightly more technological than what you were saying. What if, what happens if what happens if the skyscraper? Watch this. The skyscraper. What if they say, I don't want to put a billboard on my skyscraper, but I like the idea. What's another thing you could do? What do you guys think? Turn on the screen, but they don't want a screen. Like I don't want a screen. How? I don't want a projection. I don't want. I don't want anybody to see anything on my building. That's actually there. That's the hint. Oh. So the building could be the billboard? No, because I, I don't want that. Hologram, how so? What do we need? Hologram, how so? We need hologram. Keep going. So, this is you don't want to build? Yes. Like, you ever heard of Yu-Gi-Oh? No. Or it's a car game where they put down a car and the monster comes up. Out could. Of so Get it closer. Into a hologram projector. Closer, but it's still projected. The, the building's still going to be pissed. I don't want anything on my building. Keep going. You're almost there. What do you think? I was just going to think of, you said technology. Yes. Creating some sort of game. Yeah. Game, like not game software, but a game that can be played on some type of console. So, where it's not projected on a building. So, so guys, that's that's closer. What's the, what's the modern day TV screen? Your phone. Yeah. Your phone. Do you, have you guys heard of AI, artificial intelligence? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what I would do is, I would say, like, listen, I would, like, there are currently people that are building things where you can walk by. I mean, so a couple of years ago, I started an entrepreneurship competition in Latin America called United the Americans. We need lots of ideas. But what I do is I find Latin American entrepreneurs that have great ideas, invest in their business, I bring them up to the US, and then I take them on tours where I can introduce them to other venture capital funds and different leaders. And, Airbnb, Facebook, Google, these, these companies that potentially buy their ideas. So I had an idea of walking by, very similar, walking by a building, taking out your phone, put it, putting your phone here, and then th that building, that building doesn't change. The building stays as it is. No one even sees anything different. But if I'm holding the phone, all of a sudden there's someone in that building talking to you. So like Pokemon Go to Exactly. Exactly. That's augmented reality. That's AI. Right? So that way the skyscraper is not mad at you because nothing's changing, but you should do what you want. And maybe you focus it on people that love antiques, and all of a sudden like old school battleships are like flying around the top of the building. Or like antique cars are like driving you around the building. You can literally walk into like, I don't know. Uh, Madison Square Garden, and all of a sudden Patrick Ewing is like, hey. <laughs> but Patrick Ewing is obviously not there, but you have the phone. Mm -hmm. Something like so. So, but but in order to do that, all you need to do is you need to find an AI company. You can say, I have these great ideas. I'll help you. I'll work for you. I'll work for you at an entry level job. I want to learn how to do this. I'll do all the relationship managing. I'll bring you all the antique people. I'll bring. I'll go to all the car shows and all the antique shows, and I'll bring you the cool people. I'll be the collaboration person. Because then you're just building relationships, right? Which are going to help you eventually when you're 42 and don't want to start your own thing. So, question about starting your own thing. Yeah. Right? Because, like, what we just mentioned is actually big picture stuff. Yes. So, my question would be I accept that probably doesn't have the funds now. So, sort of selling them this big idea, and trust me, companies like this are like tigers, they could pounce up with ideas. Yeah, of course. So wouldn't it be ideal for you to sell like a lesser idea to have, if this is the ultimate, this is the big plan, 
that sit somewhere else. Or maybe, I don't know, I don't know the line gets a bigger idea, but it's a good question. It's a good, it's a good question and it shows insight in people's head. Minds. So I hear your question. I think it's a good question. It's an important question. It's something that everybody's thinking, but nobody wants to ask. What I'd say is this. I'm pretty sure this guy's an idea machine. I don't care if you steal my idea. I actually give out all my ideas all the time, and I hope that you steal it, and I hope that you implement it. Because I'll have 15 more tomorrow. This is not his last idea. Right? Mm -hmm. It actually makes him more attractive. Because if tomorrow somebody steals it, number one, that means it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Number two, if he's talking about it out in public and then somebody steals it, he can then use that and say, like, I gave this idea to Company X, they ran with it, I want to do this for you. And it just builds credibility. Mm -hmm. Like, people are so scared, people are so scared of people stealing their ideas, that's a scarcity mentality. The second I hear somebody say, I'm scared of someone stealing my ideas, I'm like, you're a loser. And it's not even your fault that you're a loser, because you've been conditioned by society to be fearful of everything. Mm -hmm. Steal all my things, all that hundred more money. And that's why I'm unstoppable. And that's why if you're a real entrepreneur, you're also unstoppable. Because there are no, there is never, I can't sleep at night because I have too many, I want to have less ideas. You know, I want to just sleep at night. Steal all my ideas. The second somebody says to you, you should steal my idea, it's like you're a scarce, you're a scarcity mentality person, and I actually don't really want to be around you. <laughs> Same thing's gonna be true for you. You're gonna have all kinds of policies that because here's the thing, it's almost and this is really important for all of you guys, it's almost never just one thing that makes you a racial. There's this idea that if I get on the Ellen show, or if I get on Jimmy Fallon, or if I become a New York Times bestseller, then everything's just gonna be okay for me. It's never really like that. It's consistently, every single day, putting in small amounts of progress at work that over time compounds and you get what you want. So if you fear that one thing, that one idea, that one meeting, that one person, that one organization, if you put too much pressure on that one thing, you'll self-sabotage yourself. Because it's, and it's almost never, almost never, like .00001% of the time, that one thing. So these are really good mind, mindset questions that are immensely important to the success of the world. Other questions, you're great questions. But do you see what we just did here with Muhammad? I want you to all do that. I want you to keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. All right? Now what we want to do for the new guys and for the old people, for the people that were here last week, maybe what we can do is, um, I want us to come up with, so the, the new, the seven or eight of you that were here, not here last week, I want you to write down the title of the first video or article that you could write or read, uh, write or create about what we're talking about. So, how I'm going to put, how I'm going to become president of Nigeria in 2052. That's your first article. That's your first video. And then you lay out the thing, right? Why middle school profession, why, why middle school educators are more important than ever, right? How, motiva how motivational speaking can lead to uh, breaking down the walls of oppression and how I'm going to do it at Coast Coast Community College. Whatever it is. So what I want you to do is, as you're writing that down, and as you're kind of jamming with that, I want someone from last week to volunteer to come up here and share with us what your video, your article idea was, and your content was. Because we, remember how last week you wrote it out? I want somebody to come up while these guys are writing and reading. Well, come up. So, all right. So imagine that. So if you guys are writing, just keep writing. If you were here last week. Pay, pay attention here. Okay. So the topic of my article is the U.S. adopts a new model for fix. Um, sorry. Uh, the U.S. adopts a new model to fix the growing mass incarceration rate. After speaking with several researchers, psychologists, sociologists, lawyers, judges, and law enforcement within Sweden, the U.S. has finally opened up a conversation to the, I'm sorry, yeah, the U.S. has finally opened up a conversation to adopting the Nordic model. The Nordic model, which most Nordic countries practice, the best example of this practice is the country 
of Sweden. According to Investopedia, oh, sorry, Investopedia, the Nordic model is a combination of social welfare and economic systems adopted by Nordic countries. It combines features of capitalism such as a market economy and economic efficiency with social benefits such as state pensions and income distribution. September 6, 2019. The country of Sweden uses the Nordic model, the art of rehabilitation, I mean, sorry, the Nordic model through the art of rehabilitation. Sweden believes the re in rehabilitating the members of their community so they are able to acclimate back to society and contribute in a positive way. One example of this is prostitution, decriminalizing the buyers, decriminalizing the prostitutes, help to get the prostitution, help to get out of prostitution, awareness and education campaigns for the public. And that's as far as I got in my heart. So we're good. Cool. Very good. So that's that's great. Anybody else want to share? Don't be shy. Well, last week you guys were all getting up here. So y'all yeah, are. Right. Cool. So, so 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 you know what I forgot to say? When you stood up, start by saying your name, right? Because it's a good it's a good practice of saying your name. So many people don't say their names when they introduce themselves to somebody or when they're in front of a group. Say your name so you, people can start to recognize your name with your face and your image. Alright, so go ahead. Sorry. Good afternoon everyone. Please be calling everyone. I am Mohammed Bey. My idea of what I would do, I would run it like regular TV shows. It would be a pilot. So my pilot episode would give a highlight to the end. So a little foreshadowing if we get into episodes, I bet you know how the series ends without giving away the sport. So what I want to do is take old technology, mix it with new technology, and with the real estate to push humanity forward. So we burn so much energy off of a grid, why we can't take water windmills. We're only 13 feet above ground in New York. So there's a lot of water, there's a lot of wind energy that comes throughout the city. It goes throughout the skyscrapers, making it hotter because all the buildings are so close. So there's a vector there of energy not being used. So while we can't build buildings where they use that wind energy, we have a rail system that's already dug into the bedrock. We can't take use old tunnels no more because they'll cave in full of water. Open them up and use aquatic energy. So with the skyscraper being big, we'll also go in the ground. So it takes the old knowledge of as above, so below, and incorporate it into a new building, a new energy, and new structure. Great job. Who else wants to go? Let's do one more. You must call on somebody. Come on up, President. What can I see? Come on, man. You gotta get up here in front of the people, baby. When you get the president. Just remember us little people when you're the president. Um, 
alterations, but um, new ideas towards the constitution, uh, constitution that could um, sort of shape the future of Nigeria. Uh, as I continue this video, hopefully I will be able to inspire some of you to uh, drop whatever you're doing and um, listen to the call of the help Nigeria needs. Because if you're a Nigerian, you know we're in trouble right now. And the future belongs to us. The future is going to be controlled by us. And by 2052, we should be calling the next yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's it. I'm done, guys. See you later. <laughs> Turn it over to your excellency. Good. All right. Questions, comments, thoughts, concerns. Everybody should have, from last week or from today, something written down about their their their, their vision of the content they can start creating. Anybody have questions? No questions about the video, about the content, yeah, anything at all. Um, so once you get all your ideas, your, your goal is to, I mean, tie them all together, but... If you can, right? And, and, and to what? Oh, to work, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start to build a brand around those ideas. Okay. Right? So, let answer the good question. So, if you remember here, what we said was we're trying to get our dream job, right? And the, the, the purpose of this workshop is to basically figure out how to help you take the thing that you love to do and then make it a reality. Right? So the dream job or the dream project that we wrote down is the first step. The second step was what we did here. Was to find a way to make you different than other people in that in that industry, right? And by the way, guys, if this, if these four things uh, are completely unrelated to what you want to do as your dream job, don't worry about it. This is just an exercise. Like as you saw with Muhammad, like we just kept going and elevating, and elevating, and elevating, and elevating. That's how I want you to just start thinking about everything in everyday life, right? Because that's going to be the way that you really set yourself up for success. So like this is an exercise to become different. A differentiator, right? By combining a bunch of different things into one thing, right? Or to start to get the wheels turning around the questions. And the third thing that we're going to do is that well, we've done, right, is to start to create actual content. And that could be video, that could be audio, that could be article. <laughs> right? And so that's what, that's what we're doing with the whole, like, here's the video, here's my opening video, here's my opening article, she left, here's my opening video, right? So that's where we're at now. And then, and then where do we put that content? We put it everywhere. We put it on LinkedIn, we put it on Facebook, we put it on YouTube, we put it on all the platforms. Because different people are in different places. Your mom might be on Facebook, your little brother might be on Instagram. But, you know, so that's where we're at now. So this is kind of where we where we left off last week. So now this week, in the, in the remaining time that we have, in these last 45 minutes, I really want us to focus on then how do we use content to then? How do we use content to make new connections? How do we use content? to be valuable to people that could help us either get the job we want, partner with us on our things, give us money for our campaigns, hire us, work with us, buy our product, buy our service, come to our conference, give us money for our nonprofit. Ha. Most people don't even get here. Most people in college don't even create any content. They just study and then they build their resume, and that's why you guys are amazing, because you're actually doing something. You're in a leadership group, and now I want to help take it even further, right? Because this is like the future. This is what it's going to be, my man. This is president. we got two presidents here. I feel very well taken care of. Listen, when you guys become president, 
if you do not write me and invite me like to the White House and to the what is it like the, what is the equivalent of the White House? Yeah, if you don't invite me, I will take this video and I will say, listen, I gave you the idea. <laughs> Well, no. You, you, you could? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure you could, but I don't, I don't think that all of us here are going to use AI for these steps right now. But if you come up with that idea, that could be cool too. But for, for now, let's just say that we're not going to use AI for it. Okay. So, most people are not creating any content. So, what would you use in a different situation if you can't use AI? What, 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 what would I use? What do you mean? If you have a different business, that doesn't require for you to use a Oh, right. So, so I would kind of a building and go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would create content on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Facebook. I write articles. I create video. Right. The example that I was giving with Muhammad is simply because I think it's an interesting, it's an interesting example of how the idea intersection can come together and how collaborations will be important. We're gonna get more into this. But at this point, every single one of you has either an article, or a video, or a video, or an article, or a video, or whatever you may have. The good news is this, before we get into the actual networking part, whatever content you created, whether it's video, whether it's audio, or whether it's article, you can repurpose and recycle for the other things. So like, my video about becoming the president of Nigeria in 2052, that I did as a video, then I could write about that as an article. I could take the audio file from that video and I could put it on my podcast, Becoming the President of Nigeria, audio experience. Well, so now all of a sudden you have one piece of content that you're using in a lot of different places. And that same video, you can upload to YouTube, you can also upload it to Facebook, you can also upload it to LinkedIn. So now with one piece of content, you're, you can be in a bunch of different places. Question. When you write in the article, would the article still be about becoming president yes. of the two or making the video? No, no, I, I, would, I would write an article about the, I would do both. Yeah, I was going to say, that's, you could do any of them. Right. And the answer is like, yes. Would it be, yep? Would it be, yep? Would it be, yep? Should us, yep? <laughs> You're young, you got time, and you got ideas, and you speak well. Question. That's the right person. But for this group, 
right? It's good intentions will always win. Like, you'll always win. I've just seen it. When you have good intentions and you put out a lot of stuff, you'll win. <clears throat> Make sense? Other question? No, all right, cool. So now, what do we do with the content? I'm gonna do an exercise. I want you to think about, first of all, and it's spreading like a disease. What, what's that? The content. Well, it could, right? It depends on how good it is. But here's what I want you to think about. Dream job, dream project, dream whatever. I want you to think about, I want you to take five minutes right now and write down a list of five people that you would need to meet to help that dream move forward. You want to get published in a, in a magazine, maybe it's the editor in chief at this magazine. They should be living, yeah. This is for I'm spiritual, but you took it to a whole new level. He's like, what if we can talk to the angels? So five people, please. Five people that if you could meet them today and have a good conversation with them about what you wanted, they could really help you get to where you want to be.
All right, take one more minute, guys. So does everybody have a person, at least one person written down? Do you may not have one person written down? It's okay. I have four. You have four? Oh, perfect. How many have Five and a half. Five and a half? <laughs> <laughs> five and a half. Who is it? What? The half, I don't want to sit down and talk to you. I just want to the understand half. the way things. Yeah. So you were just No, like, I just want to know why the person thinks that who is, maybe there's a logic. I'm talking about Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes sense why it's a half. <laughs> You're actually being a little generous. <laughs> <laughs> you have five. All right, did, did anybody not get anybody? Did anybody not get one person? It's okay if you didn't. All right, cool. So, we're going to do a little exercise. We're going to have a little fun. Actually, why don't we, real quick, give me, we're going to go around the room, everyone give me one person that they said. Give me the dream job and then the one person. Sorry. What was the dream job you were about to hear? I'm going to use your grandparents. I'm going to use your grandparents. Oh, okay. Okay. Guys, you guys, sorry. I want everyone to listen because I think it'll be it'll be helpful to hear how people are thinking about what their dream job was and who they should talk to. So let's start again. Conscious about the way they meet. Conscious about what they meet. A little bit more specific. Yeah. Dr. Blair. Good. Um, what, or something you're interested in. Um, I was looking for one Good. Someone you could talk to. 